The Guatemalan intervention of 1954 was a covert U.S.-sponsored coup against the Guatemalan regime of Jacobo Arbenz, whose policies were deemed communistic and a threat to U.S. interests. The 1954 intervention in Guatemala represented a successful covert operation backed by the United States and engineered by the Central Intelligence Agency in a region that had often witnessed direct U.S. military intervention in the early 20th century. At the beginning of the Cold War, Latin America ranked low on the list of U.S. priorities. In fact, when the newly created CIA evaluated Soviet aims in Latin America in late 1947, it concluded that there was almost no possibility of a communist takeover anywhere in the area. At the same time, there existed a major disagreement over hemispheric priorities between the United States and Latin America. While the United States stressed strategic concerns, Latin American nations constantly pressed the United States to help promote economic development. Although the United States was primarily concerned with promoting stability in the area, it did not automatically oppose major change, as its substantial support for revolutionary Bolivia in the 1950s demonstrated. The evolving situation in Guatemala, however, provoked a much different American response. U.S. policymakers' concerns with Guatemala began in 1944 upon the overthrow of longtime dictator General Jorge Ubico. The succeeding administrations of Juan José Arevalo, an educator, and Arbenz, a reform-minded army colonel, implemented a nationalist, reformist program. These reforms soon led to a conflict between the government and foreign-owned companies, especially the powerful United Fruit Company, an American-owned corporation. These companies had influential friends and lobbyists in Washington, and the U.S. government was increasingly concerned about the growing influence of communists in Guatemala, especially in the labor movement and in the agrarian reform program. Arbenz's new labor policy led the United Fruit Company to pressure the U.S. government to impose economic sanctions. The first CIA effort to overthrow the Guatemalan president, a CIA collaboration with Nicaraguan dictator Anastasio Somoza, to support a disgruntled general named Carlos Castillo Armas and code-named Operation Fortune, was authorized by President Truman in 1952. As early as February of that year, CIA headquarters began generating memos with subject titles such as Guatemalan Communist Personnel to be disposed of during military operations outlining categories of persons to be neutralized through executive action, murder, or through imprisonment and exile. The A-list of those to be assassinated contained 58 names. Early in the Arbenz presidency, Guatemala became the first major laboratory for what would later become known as political destabilization. The CIA and the State Department, headed by Alan W. Dulles and John Foster Dulles, respectively, brothers who had ties to the AFCO, undertook a disinformation campaign that undermined Arbenz's legitimacy among the country's upper and middle classes and especially the armed forces. President White D. Eisenhower had the CIA overthrow Arbenz's government by secretly organizing a military coup. A shipment of Czechoslovak arms to Guatemala in May 1954 provided the United States with evidence that Arbenz was tilting toward the Soviet bloc and therefore had to be removed from power. The CIA had already begun arming and training a group of Guatemalan exiles, led by Guatemalan Colonel Carlos Castillo Armas, in late 1953. On June 18, 1954, this force of approximately 150 men invaded Guatemala from neighboring Honduras. Supporting the invasion force were three aircraft based in Nicaragua and flown by civilian pilots, most of whom were U.S. citizens or CIA operatives. The key to the intervention's success was neither the rebel force nor the CIA, but rather the attitude assumed by the regular Guatemalan army, which refused to mount any significant opposition to the invasion. When Arbenz took matters into his own hands and tried to arm his civilian supporters, the army prevented the move and instead forced a resignation of Arbenz on June 27. A military junta appointed Armas provisional president on July 7. Armas indicated the direction that his regime would take when he returned the Ofco lands expropriated under Arbenz. The U.S. government responded by recognizing the new government on July 13 and by providing military, economic, and technical aid to the new regime. The Arbenz government had initially hoped for international support in the crisis. Guatemala twice appealed to the United Nations Security Council to end the fighting, but received only a watered-down resolution calling for an end to any actions that might cause further bloodshed. 
The Organization of American States OAS, responded to the Guatemalan situation on June 28, the day after Arbenz resigned. The OAS Council called for a meeting of foreign ministers in Rio for July 7, although the rapid consolidation of power by Armas ended the crisis and the Rio meeting was never held. The decision by the Eisenhower administration to intervene in Guatemala was influenced by the earlier CIA-backed coup in Iran, which had toppled a nationalist regime and restored the pro-American Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi to power. The lessons of Iran were applied to Guatemala. The lessons of Guatemala would in turn be applied to Cuba with disastrous results during the Bay of Pigs debacle in April 1961. The United States had successfully kept the Guatemalan crisis a hemispheric issue to be handled by the OAS, but the American role in Arbenz's ouster violated one of the most important provisions of the OAS charter. The prohibition on intervention. The Eisenhower administration clearly believed that the Guatemalan operation was a major victory in the Cold War, and that such covert operations offered an effective and inexpensive way of dealing with similar problems in the future. The intervention itself did little to promote peace or stability in Guatemala. Armas was assassinated in July 1957, and bitter political divisions and the socio-economic issues behind them continue to haunt Guatemala in the 21st century.